You must have heard of the famous quote from Carl Sagan that we are all made of star stuff. Let me explain to you why this is true and how. Most of the elements that we are made of and everything around we see are formed inside the stars. The light elements, hydrogen, helium and lithium were created during the Big Bang nucleosynthesis. But where did the other elements that make up our bodies such as carbon, oxygen, nitrogen and the other heavier elements in the periodic table come from? To comprehend this, we must first understand the life cycle of stars and how they die. Stars are formed by a progressive contraction of huge gas clouds, also known as molecular clouds, due to gravity. These molecular clouds then start to contract into huge dense spheres and stars start to form. Once the star reaches a certain size, the process of nuclear fusion begins and hydrogen starts transforming into heavier elements. The formation of elements, which we call stellar nucleosynthesis, began in these first stars and then heavier elements were formed. When the stars die, they eject the elements formed within themselves into the interstellar medium and the next generation of stars are formed from this metal rich gas and this process goes on. As time goes by, the stars create heavier and heavier elements. But how do stars die? And do all stars form the same elements? As we saw in a previous video, stars, like us humans, have a limited lifespan. But let's go a bit deeper into the topic. There is a constant battle going on between the star's core, where components are fused, and gravity, which is attempting to smash the core. First, hydrogen is fused into helium inside the core and this energy supports the star in countering the inward gravitational force. Helium is fused to other heavy elements depending on the mass of the star. The initial mass and metallicity of a star determine how it will dive. Stars that are 10 times more massive than the sun can reach high enough temperatures to fuse heavier elements. These stars then convert carbon into oxygen, oxygen into neon and magnesium and lastly iron before they die with tremendous explosions in the form of supernova. During the supernova, other heavier elements are formed such as uranium, gold, lead, etc. However, things are slightly different when stars are 100 to 200 times more massive than the sun. Say my name. Pair instability supernova. You're goddamn right. Pair instability supernova are a type of supernova that occurs when stars of these masses explode. Pair production in the form of electrons and positrons occurs when the star's core reaches temperatures of 3 times 10 to the 8 Kelvin. The energy generated aids the star in balancing gravity's pull towards the center. When this energy is no longer adequate to balance the gravity, the star undergoes a process of pair instability supernova in which the entire star is destroyed and no remnant is left. These stars are thought to be more common in the early cosmos, producing large amount of alpha elements including oxygen, magnesium and also iron. Once all the rare elements are thrown out by the star when it goes through a supernova, gravity eventually takes hold to form new stars and planets. And they are formed using the same elements which were once forming inside the cores of the stars. So the oxygen we breathe, the iron in our blood and the calcium in the bones all come from stars that blew off a long time ago. And that's why Carl Sagan was right when he said we are all made of star stuff. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. And don't forget, you ask, send your answers.